From the magnificent Midwest, it's the Suzanne Benker Show, where men and women are equal in value but wildly different by nature. Join us here every week as we challenge the culture's hugely flawed narratives on men, women, sex, and love. From coast to coast and from around the world, thank you for joining us. Did you know that online dating is a billion dollar business? Well, stay tuned because we're going to talk about how women can use these dating sites to their advantage by recognizing the deep differences between what women want and what men want when it comes to love and commitment. So roughly 15 million Americans say they have or continue to use websites or mobile dating apps in their pursuit of romance. Now, technically these dating apps are used for both hookups, which I don't know why anybody would want to do that, but okay, or marriage or long-term relationships. For women who are looking for commitment, which I would argue is most women who are using dating apps, even if they pretend otherwise, what are the ways you can weed out the men who are just there looking for a rump in the hay? Well, let's begin by addressing what not to do. So for an example, I pulled something from this San Francisco dating app called Coffee Meets Bagel. And this website has a tagline that says, meet singles looking for real relationships. Okay, for real relationships. So let's assume this is not a hookup dating app like I think that's Tinder. So right from the get-go, that's what this site is for. So presumably the people who are who are going there are looking for a relationship. And the women who started this site, Coffee Meets Bagel, when doing their research, concluded that men are twice as active on dating apps as women are, which is pretty interesting, although makes sense. And when these ladies asked what women wanted when they were doing their research, the women said, less creepy guys, more quality guys, guys who are, quote, serious about taking the next step. Okay, so that's just that's just some background for this particular dating app. And I, as I say, I'm sure they're all different, but that's this one. So one woman's profile on this Coffee Meets Bagel site shows exactly how a woman will not get what she's looking for. It says, quote, she's got an MBA and a fancy job. Like! Exclamation point. And of course, that like means you're supposed to you know, like her profile, click on her profile to show that you like it as a man. On what universe is this a selling point to a man who's looking for an actual relationship and not just sex? This is the problem with the modern generation. They are utterly clueless about how sexual attraction works. And again, as I'm always pointing out, to be fair, I'm not attacking them. I actually feel bad for them because nobody told them. So it's really the generation above them that failed them always feel like I need to throw in that caveat because I get really frustrated and angry about the fact that they're so clueless, but it really is not their fault. These women are under the impression that the changes that have occurred over the past few decades with respect to women's roles have essentially changed the nature of human desire and nothing could be further from the truth. The criteria men and women use to choose a partner has not changed at all. So with that in mind, I'm going to read from an article that a former co-author of mine several years ago, his name is John Townsend. I I wrote the book Women Who Win at Love with him, and he's a professor um, in New York, and he's been teaching, he's an evolutionary biologist basically, who's been um, teaching this stuff for decades. And in this article, the message of his article is just as topical today as it was then when he wrote it. He writes that many, I'm going to just, I'm obviously not going to read the entire article, so I'm just reading pieces of it. He writes that many pundits predicted that when women gained economic independence, they would no longer have to tie their sexuality to love and financial security and the traditional gender differences in sex and partner selection would disappear. 
But these changes have not eliminated the differences in how men and women express their sexuality or the criteria they use to pick partners. On the contrary, the available evidence suggests the opposite is true. Increasing the freedom women and men, uh, sorry, increasing the freedom of women and men to explore their own sexualities and to choose what they like best makes basic sex differences more rather than less visible. Women and men perceive sexual attractiveness differently. The criteria they use to judge are weighted differently and the goals underlying the weighting differ so that the entire process of, of evaluation is different. Okay, now I'm going to pause here and tell you that this, again, this is John Townsend. I co-authored a book with him several years ago, and he he's known for this costume experiment that he did, um, which I'm going to describe now, that he, um, well, he describes it in this article. In one experiment, for example, I had models dressed as successful professionals, as fast food employees, and as working class townies. High status costumes literally transformed homely men and made them more attractive to women than handsome men, sorry, than handsome men in low status costumes. I then had the models wear costumes fitting descriptions of high, medium, and low income and occupational status, physician, high school teacher, and waiter, waitress, and showed them to 160 law students. The results were startling. Responding to the best looking model in the fast food costume, 60% of the men said they would be willing to date her. And half were willing to have sex. Only 28% of the women said they were willing to date and eight to have sex. 60% for the men, 28% of the women. No woman said she was, no woman, not one, no woman said she was willing to marry such a person. But 11% of the men said that they would. That's the, again, best looking model in the fast food costume. Most female students were unwilling to engage in any kind of relationship when models wore the fast, fast food uniform and were described as waiters, even when the models were good looking. Responding to the homeliest model wearing the blazer and Rolex and described as a doctor, a full 40% of the women said they would be willing to marry such a person, and 64% were willing to date him. No man, again, not one, no man said he was willing to marry such a person. In-depth interviews with adult professionals corroborated these findings. These tendencies are real and they operate in everyday life. Because men are largely indifferent to women's status and earning power, women with higher status must compete with other women for the relatively small pool of higher status men. This competition can be heated and intense. Okay, now, like I said, he wrote this some time ago, but this is even more pertinent today because, as he says there in the end, women with higher status, which now they are higher status than ever before, must compete with women for the relatively small pool of higher status men. And that pool is getting even smaller. So this isn't going away. This is being magnified today. A man on a dating app who's looking for love and not just sex is not concerned with where you went to school or what kind of job you have. That may make for great conversation, but it's not a selling point. What is a selling point to this type of man are your looks first and foremost. Sorry to say it. That's the culture we live in. And when you put them on dating apps, I mean, when you're, sorry, when you're using dating apps, that's even more true. At least if you're meeting in person, you have other things that could be going for you. Maybe you're not really, you know, your face isn't beautiful, but your body is, or maybe you're, you know, like you can see things or your, or your, or your smile or your, um, 
you know, there's just other things, your aura, other things about you that you can see in person might make up for that. But when you're dealing with dating apps, it's literally just a face on a piece of paper, it's not a piece of paper, but on online. So that's even more relevant as to how you look, why you're, why, how your look is, why, how you look matters. Sorry, I couldn't get that out. Um, okay. So first and foremost, your looks, and then your demeanor, which of course, again, he won't really know until he meets you and your attitude towards marriage and children. But you're not even going to get past the gate without the looks piece. And then that begs the question of how do you want to present yourself, you know, when it comes to your looks? There's just too much focus on what women do on these dating apps for many of them. And they're not understanding why they're not getting the response that they want. Again, this is for marriage minded, commitment oriented women, which is most of the women on apparently on this app, but I would argue that that's pretty true across the board. It's not that a man shouldn't be or won't be interested in what you're doing for a work for a living, but he's more interested in where you're headed and in whether or not there's going to be space set aside for him. No man worth his salt wants to play second fiddle to a woman's career. He wants to know whether or not you prioritize him in the marriage and or family, if you're young enough to still have a family, pure and simple. That's it. That's where his head is. At least this type of man that I'm talking about, which is a family oriented commitment. You know, that, that's what these women say they want is a man who wants, quote unquote, to take it to the next level. It should serve as a warning to women who are on these apps and who are emphasizing their um, education and career that when, and if you find a man and you will, who praises you for this MBA and your fancy job and who comes after you with a vengeance, making it all about you, that's a signal that he's not marriage material, but is very likely just looking to hook up. And, or if he is looking to get married and he's really into the fact that you're this high earner, you better check out what he's doing for a living because he might very potentially be wanting you to take care of him. And of course, we know how that turns out. So either which way, there's nothing advantageous about emphasizing your education and career on these websites and focus or on these dating sites and making that the focus of, 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 you know, who you are and what you're all about. So I hope that helps anyone listening who's considered using a dating app. And if you're not somebody who's in the market or who's used a dating app and you know people who are, and I bet everybody listening to this knows someone who is, whether it's a grown um, child or um, a friend or a family member or a coworker. My suggestion for those women is to put a genuine photo of yourself in classy attire on your profile, one that's not doctored to make you look like your real self. I mean, sorry, one that's not doctored to make you not look like your real self. And then put your basics there, you know, the location, your education, job status, that's fine. But in the description, focus exclusively on what you're looking for with respect to marriage and family. And if you're past the family stage, then what you're looking for with respect to a relationship. And that and, 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 and your other interests, you know, that are outside of your work, you know, where do you want to live? How do you, whether or not you want to travel or not, whether you want a simple life, whether all those things are important for the man who's looking for a wife, let's just call it what it is. Um, and to not, you know, to skirt around that or to play games and pretend that's not the case is just silly and a waste of time. I think there's just not enough honesty right out of the gate so that everybody knows where everybody's head is rather than playing these games and finding out way later that you're not on the same page. So does making a profile like this mean you'll get fewer clicks? Absolutely. That's great though, because it also means you won't waste time with men who don't want what you want. And I don't know, call me crazy, but it seems to me like that's a win-win. 
And that ends this hour of the Suzanne Banker show. Before you leave us, I'd appreciate it if you take one minute to give us a review at Apple Podcasts or whatever platform you use. If you've done that already, or if you can't leave a review on your podcast player for some reason, please consider sharing the show with a friend or a family member. Word of mouth is the primary way we get the word out about the Suzanne Banker show. Thanks for listening, everyone. Have a great week.